Don't be alarmed, it's me. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. Now I know you're wondering where is Delanda and what is going on. I am staying at an Airbnb with my husband for a couple of weeks because we are having some tile replaced in our home. So this is my setup for the next two videos or so. So don't get used to it, it's beautiful. The cow is probably a paid actor, but we will get into that later. Today we are getting ready for Mother's Day and I am going to be tackling rhinestones once again. This time I am going to be using an ombre design that I purchased from Craftable Things on Etsy. I will make sure to leave a link to that shop below this video. I am going to do my very best. I have not ever tried using this design before and the first time I tried making an ombre design, let's just say it did not go so well. But I am going to do what? Give it the good old college try. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let me show you the materials that I brought with me in order to do this tutorial, and we will jump right in. The materials I'm using for this project include my Cricut Maker. However, this project can be cut with any Cricut cutting machine, including the Cricut Joy. I am using rhinestones that I purchased from Eve at the Baby's Booty. I will leave a link to her store below. I'm using a purple strong grip mat. However, it is not required. You can use a green standard grip mat. I'm using chopping mats that I purchased from the Dollar Tree to uh, save my rhinestone templates. I'm also using what is called a wax pen. This comes in handy in case any of your rhinestones are not face up the way they are intended to be. I'm using a trim painter that was purchased locally either at Lowe's or Home Depot. However, you can also purchase them from Amazon. I'll leave a link below. I'm using rhinestone flock that I purchased from Heat Transfer Warehouse. The rhinestone flock and the white KTM mask go hand in hand. Both of those were purchased from Heat Transfer Warehouse. My shirt is a Gildan Heavy Cotton shirt in large. And once again, I had not chosen the color of stones that I was intending to use for this project because I brought so many colors with me, it was hard to choose. But as we get into the tutorial, you will see that I actually ended up using six different colors but you will see as we go along now let's head to the computer so I can show you the craftable things site on Etsy in order to navigate to Patrice's shop on Etsy you will go to etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash craftable things and there you will be able to see all of the beautiful designs that Patrice has created herself within Silhouette Studio. And you can see that she has a lot of rhinestone files for the beginning crafter and some that are complex for maybe an intermediate bling crafter. I am using this file that requires 10 SS rhinestones. It is the oh so loved file that is on the left and it is an ombre design. You can see this file comes in three versions and two different sizes. And it is important to pay attention to the fact that I will need 10 SS rhinestones. Now, if you go through her site, you can see how she outlines at the top of each file the size rhinestones that are re required for the design. So there's a design that requires 10 SS, and she also has some files that require 6 SS rhinestones. It is very, very important to pay attention to that to make sure that you have the exact right size rhinestones that are required for your design. Now let's head over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I am connected to the Cricut Maker. However, this project can be completed from any Cricut cutting machine. The first thing I'm going to do is upload the file that I intend to use for this project. 
I'm going to click browse and I'm going to navigate to my downloads where I have that file saved. It is the also oh loved outline ombre and Patrice has already labeled the size of the file in the name of the file. And if I were to click up here where it says image name and scroll over, I can see the size of the file is right here. So I'm going to just write that down. It is 11.433 for the width and the height should be 7.41. Okay. So make sure to make a note of that. I'm going to click upload and I am going to look right here in my image options or my recent uploads and I can see the file. And if I hover over the file, you will also be able to see the size of the file right there. Remember, I'm using SS10 stones for this file. I'm going to click add to canvas and i'm going to make sure that when my file comes in it comes in at the right size so when i see that it has come in i can see the width is at 5.8 and that is not the correct size what i'm going to do is continue to make sure my um, lock is on right here i'm going to double click in the width and i'm only going to change the width i'm not going to change the height remember the width is 11.4 four three three and i'm going to hit enter i'm not going to actually i'm not going to keep that three on there i'm just going to change the width to 11.43 okay and by changing the width to 11.43 that changed the height to the exact right size which is the 7.411 so the next thing i'm going to do is i am going to i'm looking at my layers panel and i can see that this file has multiple layers and i don't want all of those layers to be cut together i only want the different color combinations to be cut together so what i'm going to do is click ungroup and i'm going to look at my layers panel now i can see that the two purple layers are not attached so what i'm going to do is click on that first purple layer i'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to scroll down to that top of the word loved because I want those two pieces to be attached. So I have both of those selected and I am going to attach the two purple layers. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to I see that the yellow layers are not attached where the, the outlines of the hearts and the outline of the word loved. So I'm going to select that first layer, which is the two hearts. I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to look for the outline of the word loved and I'm going to attach those. So now once I get to my four mats, because I'm going to have four mats, I should have the two yellow layers that are attached like this. And I should also have the two purple layers attached like this. And then I should have a pink layer and I should have a black layer. Now, even though these are not the colors I'm using for my shirt for my mom, it doesn't matter because what will actually matter is the color of the stones that I brush in. OK, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and click make it. And remember, I should have four mats. Okay, so I can see that I have four mats. I have the old soul, which will be in one color. I have loved, which will be in another color. I have the top of the word loved and I have the bottom of the word loved. Now, I actually don't need to use four mats. It would not even makes sense to use four mats in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is just move this layer right here or this pink color right here. I'm going to click move object and I am going to move this one over to this purple mat and I'll just make sure that it is move to the bottom okay let me make sure I'm clicking on the right one and I'm just going to move that to the bottom of the mat. Let me bring the view down right here okay and I'm just moving that down and I'm also going to move move also oh so that I'm actually using two mats 
Okay, let me see if it'll give me the option to do that. All right, I wanna move it to the yellow mat and I'll just move it right here. And I think I'm in a safe zone. I don't think I'm in jeopardy of having anything cut off. Okay, let me see if I can even just leave it up there. No, that's not good. Okay, I'm gonna keep it just like that. So I have two mats that will be cut out with um, my rhinestone flock. So now we are going to click continue. And it is my understanding that there is actually a flock option for cutting. And I'm going to make sure that it is. And if not, we will use the heavy card stock settings. So I'm going to click browse all materials and see if there is something called um, rhinestone flock. No results. Let's see. Flock. Flock iron on flock paper. I'm going to give it a try. I am going to give flocked paper a try and see what happens with that. All right. It says um, load my material. So I'm just using my regular fine point blade and we will be what? Learning together. Everything that I'll do from here will be back on the camera. I have my purple strong grip mat and I have the rhinestone flock. Now remember you do not have to use a purple strong grip mat. You can actually use a green standard grip mat, but this is what I brought with me. So this is what I have to use. I'm removing the cover and I am going to cut a piece of the rhinestone flock that is big enough to cover my entire image. I'm using my Cricut True Control knife and I'm just going to cut it right there, right on top of the mat. I am going to get the mat inserted into my Cricut Maker. And remember, I am using the flocked paper cut setting. Here is the Dollar Tree chopping mat. So I'm gonna just take one out of here. I've already taken the other one out. And what I'm going to do is take the flock design. I mean, the, the design, I'm gonna remove it away from the backing. Make sure you can see that. I'm just removing it from the backing. And I'm being careful not to stretch this out Man, that cut really nicely. I only see one hole that is still filled in, but I'm double checking. And it's this one right here. See that hole? Let me just pull that one out. And the rest of them cut out nicely. And I'm going to place this on the mat. I'm gonna place it sideways because this design is a little bit long or wide and I really see I could have saved all this flock I really should have cut this out but I think it's a little too late I might be wrong but I feel like it is I think it's important for me to pause right here and let you know that I'm very nervous about this when I started looking at all of the colors that I have on hand I was nervous about choosing which colors will look nice together. So instead of using four colors, I've decided to use three colors and we will go with that. So for the outline portion, I'm going to use Jonquil and the for one part of the loved design, I'm going to use Rose. And for the other portion of the ombre design, I'm using Rose AB. And hopefully these will look nice together. If they don't, I'll keep the shirt for myself and I'll choose again and make a different one for my mom. But we are going to give this a good old college try and I'm going to do my very best. Okay, so I have my colors selected. I am going to start brushing in the outline first and then we will get that pressed. We'll get it transferred and pressed and then we will get the other stones brushed in as we go. Now, what Patrice suggested that I do is pour a generous amount of stones over the design. So I'm opening the Jonquil color of stones. 
And I'm going to pour a generous amount. I have finished brushing the stones in for the outline. Now I am going to go over this with my hand, with my fingers, but in addition to this, because I want to make sure I don't have any double stones or I'm not missing. See, I just felt one. This is an extra right here. And I also want to make sure that I'm not missing any stones. I am going to take a picture of this with my phone and get a better look at it. There's an extra stone right there. There's an extra right there. It's so hard to tell just by looking at it. You think you can see it, but it's best to just double check. So I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to take a picture of this to make sure that I don't have any extra stones. It's just like having a another pair of eyes looking at it okay i'm looking at it i can blow it up with my phone okay and just get a, a better look at it so i'm just looking through my phone to make sure i don't have any extra stones and nothing is out of place that looks good okay so this is how i'm double checking myself because i don't have anybody else here to double check for me Okay, it looks good. Now I am going to get these stones that you can't see. They're over here to the side. I'm gonna get them placed back in this container and I'm going to make sure to put this band back on it to keep them secure. I have a piece of the KTM mask that I will use to transfer the stones to my shirt. And it's my understanding that this is very, very um, sticky and it almost like makes the stones jump from the flock so what I'm going to do is use the shirt that I'm going to be pressing the stones on and I am going to just stick it to the shirt and pull it away from the shirt a few times just to make the mask less sticky um, so I'm being careful about moving this because I don't want to mess it up it took a while to get those stones brushed in and so I'm just going to remove this this uh, KTM mask is brand new and so I'm just trying to make it a little less sticky so I'm going to stick it to the shirt and peel it back and stick it to the shirt probably do this like three or four times and then peel it back I'll get this top part brushed in and I think I'm going to use the rose Hotfix SS10. All right, my heat press is set to 350 degrees for 12 seconds. I am going to do a pre-press on my shirt. I'll do a quick pre-press, get a crease. Okay, I have my shirt ready. I got a crease down the middle so I know exactly where the middle is okay i have the design and from what i'm told this is the hardest part so i'm gonna be super careful about this i am going to commit don't quit <laughs> so i'm going to fold this in like a taco and i am going to just quickly get this place down on top of the outline 
One, two, three. Hey, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Successfully. I did it. I did it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I am going, I wish I would have brought my brayer, but I didn't. I am going to just go over this to make sure that the stones are really adhere to the mask. I'm very excited about that. Okay, I have the design. I'm going to lay it on here. centered I think I need to oh I definitely need to come up some too far down still want to stick with that three finger length just come down about three finger lengths I don't need to be that far down okay right there looks good and I'm not going to use Teflon or anything I'm just going to press it just like this and we will see. Ooh. <laughs> I am so excited about this. I'm about to bust. I'm about to scream, but I'm trying not to. Okay, and I'm going to use this same mask to get the next part of the design pressed down. I am really trying hard to keep it together. Let me grab the other part. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my phone the first time. I am going to take a picture of this and I will zoom in on the photo to make sure that I don't have any doubles and that none of the holes are not filled so with my phone of course I can zoom in much closer than I can just by looking at it and this is one way to kind of just double check yourself I'm going to do what Eve says commit don't quit taco fold and I'm going to just place it down quickly Okay, so it's not as sticky as it was the first time, which is actually really good because I don't want there to be any drama. All right, I'm gonna try my best to make sure these fit in perfectly where they're supposed to. That's why I did the outline first so I'll know where to put it. This looks really good. This looks really... Ooh! I know what I did wrong. This was supposed to be placed right here. I'm going to have to do it again. This was supposed to be down here. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to just do it again. All right, I have the last piece brushed in. And now that I've seen where I went wrong, I'm going to do it the right way and show you what I should have done with this oh so part. And then you can just tell me if you like it because I still think this looks nice, but this is not the way the design was intended. So I'm gonna get this last part placed down very carefully. I think that's very pretty. I think it's very pretty. Now, let me show you what it was supposed to look like. This is this shirt and it's finished. 
And I think my mom would love to have this because I think the way the O so stands out. Um, let me know what you think about it. You know, if you how do you feel about the colors I chose and all of that. But I am going to do it the right way. And we will see if we like it. I'm back in Cricut Design Space and let me show you what I should have done in order to use three colors. What I should have done was ungroup the file and I should have selected the purple layers to be attached. So the two hearts plus the top of the word love and I should have attached that. And then what I also should have attached were the yellow. So the two hearts at the top plus, and I'm holding my shift key to attach them, plus the outline of the word loved and oh so. Okay, so those three layers should have been attached. I'm gonna do that. So all of that turns yellow. So instead of having four mats, I'll have three mats. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so also love should have been cut together. And then the top of the word loved, which is the inner piece, and then the bottom of the word loved. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get that cut out and then I'll show you how I press it on the shirt. Everything else is the same. The way you brush the stones in is the same. The way you transfer the stones from the flock to the KTM mask is the same. Okay, so let's get this pressed on our shirt and we'll be ready to finish up this tutorial. So I've cut the flock again and what I'm doing here is just showing you what the design was supposed to look like. I will get the rhinestones brushed in and I'll get the shirt pressed and you can see what it looks like. And I have decided I'm going to use black diamond, light rose, and fuchsia. Okay, so we will get those brushed in. I'm going to use black diamond as my outline. I'll use light rose and fuchsia for the inner parts of the love design. So I'll quickly brush these in and get this pressed on the shirt. Okay, I have the design on the shirt the, with the KTM mask. This color is Black Diamond AB. I'm going to press it 350 for 12 seconds. Oh, that's very pretty. That's very, very pretty. Oh, that's super pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to use this same piece of transfer tape to get the next part of the design the one that has the inner hearts All right this is the second part of the design it's the top part so i'm just line it up best way i can oh i think this is going to be so pretty oh my goodness i love it already oh my goodness i love it already okay. gorgeous now I'll get the last piece okay I have the third layer and I'm going to get this placed in here carefully this is the same piece of transfer tape that I've used multiple times it is not as sticky as it was when I first started using it. All right, I'm gonna peel this. And, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is the finished product. Oh my, you already know what I'm gonna say. You already know what I'm going to say. I love it. <laughs> Look at this look at this i love it and no camera on this planet can ever do these diamonds these rhinestones any justice no camera let me try to get i can't even getting closer doesn't help getting look at that look at that 
My mom is going to love this. She is going to love it. Okay, if you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye!